Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try not to preach long. Um, Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 1 from the message translation today. And I encourage you to find it in your Bibles, even though it's going to be on the monitors. I don't want us heavily relying on the monitors because the monitors may go out one day and then what am I, what am I going to do? Amen. So I encourage you to bring your Bibles to church, whether electronically or physically. When you found it, shout, I got it. It reads, verse 1, Then Jesus entered and walked through Jericho. There was a man there, his name was Zacchaeus, the head tax man and quite rich. He wanted desperately to see Jesus, but the crowd was in his way. He was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. When Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, delighted to take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped. What business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Zacchaeus just stood there a little stunned. He stammered, stammered apologetically. Master, I give away half of my income to the poor. And if I'm caught cheating, I pay four times the damages. Then Jesus said, today salvation, I'm sorry, today is salvation day in this home. Here he is, Zacchaeus, son of Abraham, for the son of man came to find and restore the lost. Amen. Is that a good text? may be seated in the presence of the Lord for the time that is ours. I'm going to kind of hang my hat on, I think it's around verse 3, where it said he wanted desperately to see Jesus. And I want to entitle this Desperate for Grace. Desperate for Grace. Let us pray. God, we thank you and praise you for the presence of your Holy Spirit in this place. It's an unusual presence that we feel today, but we know it's nothing but you. And so God, as I stand, I, I've studied, I've prepared, but I know you have something in store for us. And so God, just help me yield to you as I go through the text and lift up your name. Stand into me, Lord, as I stand. Speak through me as I speak. Open the ears and hearts of, of us, your, listen, uh, your, your hearers, that we may hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Desperate for grace. Desperate times breed desperate measures. It's a proverbial statement that I've heard several times. It's attributed to Hippocrates and um, Shakespeare. And being one who's interested in context and meaning, I haven't really been able to find specifically what the context of this quote um, was originated in. And so, um, even though I haven't found that, it doesn't prevent me from highlighting this interesting statement to us. <laughs> desperate times breed desperate measures. It speaks to me that justifying actions 
that might be considered extreme or outside of the norm when other options seem inadequate in the face of crisis or urgent need. It reflects that under certain circumstances, people may be compelled to take action they wouldn't consider in less challenging situations. Amen. So let me get right to the point as we are, as we are um, indulging in what Luke is telling us. And if I can just get right to the point, we are living in desperate times, living in challenging times domestically and internationally. If you don't have eyes to see, you either aren't looking or you don't want to see. These are despairing and distressed times in 2024. 2023 has been one of the most conflictive years in the world since the end of World War II. And in just 12 months in 2023, political violence has increased by 27%. It has grown in intensity and frequency. The war in Gaza brought 2023 to a close with over 17,000 dead and, and 17,000 dead accounted for so far. And warnings from the United Nations of the risk of humanitarian collapse and genocide of the Palestinian population trapped in the strip and the standoff between sides trying to secure a ceasefire. These are desperate times. In 2024, several education issues will carry over from 2023, including school choices, debates, and parental rights arguments around book banning and preferred names and pronouns, as well as increased potential lawsuits around the topics. For school administrators, workforce shortages remain a key potential for, for lawsuits and concern. Legislatures are not only worried about having enough adults working in schools, but figuring out ways to get kids to come back at a time when chronic absenteeism has become a serious problem. We are living in desperate times. The, the drug fentanyl, prior to the pandemic, annual deaths from drug overdose in the U.S. were already at 65,000 a year. By 2023, that number has nearly doubled, with more than 110,000 deaths related to drug overdose, and roughly 70% of those deaths are due to fentanyl. And it is now the leading cause of death between, for Americans between the ages of 18 and 45. We are living in desperate times. Long considered a local concern, especially for big cities, housing is now a growing priority for state lawmakers. There is not enough affordable housing for lowest income rentals. We are living in some desperate times. The COVID-19 pandemic helped peel back the layers regarding the mental health crisis that has been building up for years and mental health is an urgent priority. I'm concerned with the mental health of not only myself but my family as well as the church. We are living in desperate times desperate desperate times crime is increasing 
And if I could go back to uh, Marvin Gaye with trigger happy policing, amen. Cr crime is going up. I see murders going up. I see street takeovers increasing. I see smash and grab robberies. I don't even want my children working in the mall anymore. We are living in desperate times. The upcoming election. It is creating tension. It's, it, it's creating stress. Where are we going to be in this time next year with the political arena that is setting place for us in America? And I just wanted to stop by and tell everybody in case you didn't know we are living in desperate times, and that's just domestically and internationally. What about in your house? What, what about at your job? Is anybody living in some complex times trying to make ends meet, amen, trying to raise children, trying to maintain relations trips, trying to stay healthy and safe and build for your future. I want to remind everybody, tell me what I'm about to say. We are living in desperate times. This escalating challenge of the world it leaves me pondering on this statement, desperate times breed desperate measures. As we face the chaos and despair of these days, my heart cries in desperation for a source that will provide me hope and redemption. In other words, I'm desperate for grace, amen. <laughs> I, I, I'm desperate for grace, and whenever you are desperate for the grace of God, you must understand that you are desperate for Jesus. For, for John declares, from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. And I know, I know, I know you to, to say you're desperate is kind of funny. We don't like to admit that we are desperate. It, it, it makes us feel this low. Amen. When, when we say we're desperate because it lets us give the perception that we aren't sufficient and we are needy and things like that. But that may be okay for me to say that I'm not desperate for a, from a worldly perspective, but I am not ashamed to say that I am desperate for the Lord. I, I, I am desperate for the Lord. I am desperate for God's grace because when I become desperate for God's grace, I I realize that when I reach his grace that my whole life can change that that when I tap into the grace that only comes from the Lord my circumstances can change today amen so I'm not ashamed to say that I am desperate for Jesus and so Zacchaeus today becomes a model of what it looks like to be desperate for grace as he lived in times of desperation as Rome, as they were under Roman oppression, and as a tax collector, he was an accessory to their oppressive acts. That means he was in bed with them. He was benefiting from all of the oppression from the Roman government. And, and, and he was um, benefiting and, and making out okay. He was rich. He had a lot of power. He had a lot of clout. But he was not welcome into the religious community because of how per, per people perceived him. And then one day he heard that Jesus was coming by amen and he teaches you and me what we need to do if we are in, in in trying to be connected to God with the desperation that only comes from our heart so if you look in the text it says that he desperately wanted to see Jesus but there was some things that was preventing him from seeing Jesus and what I learned in the text is that if you are desperate for Jesus, you got to leave the crowds behind. Amen. The text says that, that, that he was desperate to see Jesus, but couldn't see Jesus because of the crowd. Y'all know about crowds, right? 
There's different types of crowds. There's family crowds. Y'all know family crowds, the, the, the crowds of our family that we hang around with because we love them so much. We, and with the, the crowds of our, our brothers and our sisters and our children and our, our parents and our cousins and, and we love them so much that we overlook some things that are going on when we are engaging with them and because of those crowds we can't see Jesus. Amen. Y'all know them family crowds. Now y'all know you came with your family so, so just say amen to yourself. Say, say amen in your heart so that you don't get in any trouble, Greg, on the way, on the way home. But you know them family crowds. Family crowds that knew you back when. Family crowds that said, we always did it like this. How come you don't want to be a part of us? What, you think you too good for us now? Because you go to that church, because you serve on that board, and if you're not careful, them family crowds will keep you from seeing Jesus. That ain't, that ain't the only type of crowd. You know them friend crowds, amen? Them, them, them friend crowds, the ones you used to shake it up in the club with, them, them friend crowds, the ones that you said that you would always have her back and always have his, his back, them friend crowds that you would go to bat for, that you would run through a wall for, but you realize being in those crowds prevents you from seeing Jesus, amen. Amen. You know them, them family crowds and, and, and them friend crowds and them, them, them work crowds. Amen. Them, them crowds you hang out with eight hours a day. The, them crowds you go to happy hour with and them crowds that you talk junk about with, about so and so. Them are the type of crowds that prevent you from seeing Jesus. Y'all better be careful in them crowds. Be careful. Be careful in them crowds family crowds friend crowds thank you thank you friend crowds and 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 what was the other one work crowds amen but but watch out for them church crowds amen <laughs> You know, the, you know them church crowds, <laughs> the ones that know everything, the ones that look down upon you, the, the, the ones that won't let you forget about who you used to be. You know, you know them church crowds that say we always did it like this and we always going to do it like this. You know them church crowds will, will prevent you from seeing Jesus. But if you want to see Jesus, if you... Desperate for them crowds, for, for Jesus, you better leave them crowds behind. You got to leave them crowds behind if you're desperate for Jesus. Didn't y'all know Jesus left them crowds behind early in the morning while everybody was asleep? He woke up and left the crowd and, and spent time with the, you better leave them crowds behind because I'm desperate for grace. I, 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 I'm desperate to be touched by God. I'm desperate for something different in my life. And these crowds affect everybody, amen. I don't care how long you've been an officer. I don't care how long you've been a preacher. I don't care what pew you bought. I don't, I don't care how much money you get. These crowds affect everybody. I don't think I'm talking to somebody else. I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. You better leave them crowds behind. And when you desperate for Jesus, you leave them crowds where they are. Them, them, them crowds are like that broad road. The road that everybody's on, but it leads to destruction. And I, I ain't trying to be on that road. I want to be on that narrow road. The road that leads to life. The road that's hard. I'm going on that road and I'm leaving that crowd behind. 
Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus because couldn't see over the crowd. Said because he was short. Whatever. I'm not going to work on the short aspect of it. All I know is that he left the crowd. Don't be afraid of leaving the crowd. Don't be afraid of standing alone and, and standing on the word. If, if nobody else going to declare it, you going to declare it because you leaving the crowd behind. I don't care what we've always done. I'm standing on the word. I'm standing on what the Lord says, and if I'm the only one that will stand, so be it. Leave that crowd below. And it said he ran. Amen. He ran ahead of the crowd. And, and climbed up a tree. And, 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 and what I see him climbing up the tree, Reverend Crockett, is he was elevating his faith. If you want to leave the crowd, if you want, if you want to find Jesus and desperate for grace, leave the crowd behind and elevate your faith. Amen. Elevate your faith. It took me a minute to get that out. Amen. He, he, he climbed the tree. He exerted some energy. He didn't walk ahead of the crowd. He ran ahead of the crowd took effort it took energy and he was probably tired but he was desperate and I stopped by to tell you that if you are desperate for Jesus you don't care how much effort it takes you don't care how tired you are you, you, you don't care all that you had to go through in the day. I am desperate to reach Jesus. And so I'm elevating, I'm, I'm, I'm sending the trajectory of my faith upwards. <laughs> Amen. That means what I normally do in desperate times don't work anymore. I got to do more. <laughs> I, I got to pray more. Hallelujah for praying more. I, I got to study God's word more. <laughs> I, I got to forgive my sister and brother more. Amen. Because what worked yesterday ain't working no more. And desperate times calls for desperate measures. And we live in a time where the church is okay with yesterday's standard. And the world is in desperate times. And we have to elevate our faith. I don't care what they think of you. And if I don't care, why do you care? You're trying to get the attention of Jesus. And you heard that he was coming by. But because of the crowd, you couldn't see him, so you positioned yourself to get to a place where you could see Jesus. <laughs> and I don't care how holy you are. Amen. Pastor, I don't care how many degrees you got. Um, um, super Christian, I don't care how often and frequent you speak in tongues. I, I don't care how long you've been a member of the society. You have to elevate your faith because we are living in different times. And if you position yourself in a place 
of elevation. When Jesus gets to the spot, Jesus will see you. Uh, look at the text. The text says that he climbed the sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. And when Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and he saw Zacchaeus. And then he called to Zacchaeus. And I think it's a songwriter that said, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus just as I was so weary, worn and sad. I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad, hallelujah. Get to the spot and Jesus will see you. Pastor may not see you. The bishop may not see me. The, the, the ministry leader may not see you. Minister of music may not see you. But if you elevate your faith, Jesus will see you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and, and Jesus said, Zach, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. And so when you leave the crowd and you elevate your faith, you also got to descend with urgency. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes when we elevate our faith, we think we the big Christian now. And we can look down on other Christians and say, you're this and that, and I'm not. Amen. But, but Jesus <laughs> said, hey, Zach, with your big self, Come on down and descend with urgency. And so now it takes humility, amen, to leave from the high place and come back down to the low place, amen, to come back down and work in ministry, to, to come back down and deal with that board member, to, to come back down and work in that ministry and, and feed them people and deal with them. It takes humility to come back down and work among the people because that's where the Lord wants you, amen. If you're praying for the change to happen, God says, let me change you so that that you can go back down and change others through the power that works in me uh, through you. And he had to do it quick because Jesus wasn't going to be there that long. He went through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem to give up his life for humanity. So when you hear the voice of Jesus, don't take your time responding to the voice. Don't say, let me get myself together before you respond to the voice. Don't say, I wasn't ready to do it this week. I said I was going to do it next week when my cousin come with me. We was going to do it. When you hear the voice of Jesus, respond immediately. But what's hidden in the text that I saw is that it wasn't just the response, it was the change. 
Because when you elevate your faith, God shows you things. God shows you things about you that brings humility to you and then brings a change. Brings a change. Look at the text. The text says, everybody else is saying, man, how can you hang out with that crook? After all that crook has done, how are you going to take care of him and forget about everybody else? And Zacchaeus said, look what I did. Everybody I cheated, I gave them back their money. And if you find out that I didn't, I'll pay them four times. And what we see in this part of the text is repentance. That's a bad word in the church. You know that. Because we just want to come to Jesus, but we don't want to change. We, we don't want to get better. We don't want to develop. We don't want to grow. We don't want to become Christ-like. We want to stay the way I am. But the way of grace is a way of change. He said, I, I, I'm not the same person. I have changed. And churches are filled with unchanged people. Pulpits are full of unchanged preachers. So let me throw myself in the mix, amen. The fruit of being with Christ, the fruit of experiencing the grace of Christ is that I am changed. Part of the reasons why people leave the church is because there is no reflection of the church in the church. There's, there's no reflection of the graces of love and mercy and kindness and gentleness in the church because we have left off the last part of Zacchaeus' story where he repented and did something that the rich ruler could not do and that was sell everything he had and follow Jesus. So the challenge for us today, the challenge for us is to be desperate for the graces that come through Jesus Christ. Are you desperate? Let's, let's redefine the word desperation. It's not a, it's not a low word. It's a word that shows that you are dependent on God and you need God's help. Anybody need God's help to raise their children? Anybody needs God's help to go back to that office tomorrow? Anybody need God's help to just go home? Husbands, put your hand down. Put your hand down, Keith. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> need God's help? To survive, then you are desperate. Desperate for the change that only comes through the grace of Christ. And so I want to offer somebody the opportunity that if you feel God pulling you, if you feel God you feel like nervousness or maybe your heart's beating fast or your stomach is feeling funny and you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you, you want to you wanna show that you heard the voice of God and you want to surrender and make 
Jesus, your Lord and your Savior. Please respond to this call of salvation. There's no other name under, in heaven or on earth that humanity can be saved. Your job won't save you. Lord knows my bank account won't save me. Your mama can't save you. The preacher can't save you. Salvation comes through no one else but Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And and you have not done anything that cannot, that grace can't reach. You have not committed an act that would prevent you from the grace that comes through Jesus Christ. Let that sink in. We've done some horrible things. Amen, somebody? Am I the only one? Okay. Wanted to make sure I was at the right church. Amen. But grace found me. And let me tell you, if grace found me, grace can find anybody. But you have to, you have to acknowledge that you're desperate. You're desperate to be saved. You're desperate to change. You're desperate for something different than what you've had before. Because desperate times breed desperate measures. So if you're here today and you want to give your life to Jesus, come forward. Come forward. Please come forward. Is there one? This is the air I breathe. Is there one? This is the air I breathe. While we're here, we open the doors of the church. If you're not a member of Ward, we'd love for you to be a member. Is there one? Living in me. Okay, here's a third call. If there's an area in your life you want to change, come forward by faith.